middle school science, recognizing chemical reactions, and writing chemical equations. Look at the girl's hair in the photo. It has obviously changed color. The process in which this occurred involved chemical reactions. How do you know that a chemical reaction has occurred? The change in color is the most obvious clue. A change in color is just one of several potential signs that a chemical reaction has occurred. Other potential signs include change in temperature, heat being released or absorbed during the reaction, the production of gas or gas bubbles being released during the reaction, production of a solid, a solid settling out of the liquid solution, and that solid would be called a precipitate. Examples of chemical reactions. A burning campfire is a chemical reaction. A burning campfire can warm you up on a cold day. Dissolving an antacid tablet is also a chemical reaction. Dissolving an antacid tablet in water produces a fizzy drink. Adding acid to milk to form cottage cheese is also a chemical reaction. When you add the acid to milk, it produces solid curds of cottage cheese. Question. Did you ever make a volcano by pouring vinegar over a mountain of baking soda? If you did, you probably saw the mixture bubble up and foam over. Did a reaction occur? How do you know? Well, the answer is yes, a chemical reaction has occurred. You know because bubbles are evidence that a gas being produced in the production of gas is a sign that a chemical reaction has occurred. Summary of recognizing chemical reaction. Potential signs that a chemical reaction have occurred include a change in color, change in temperature, production of gas, and the production of a solid precipitate. Now let's look at writing chemical equations. Look at this rusty bike. It has been left outside in the damp weather too many times, so the iron in the metal parts have rusted. Iron rusts when it combines with oxygen in the air. Iron rusting is an example of a chemical reaction. In a chemical reaction, substances change into entirely different substances. For example, the iron on the bike and the oxygen in the air have changed into the rust. Question. How could you represent this reaction besides just describing it in words? Well, the answer, scientists use a standard method to represent chemical reactions called chemical equations. What's a chemical equation? A chemical equation is a shorthand way to sum up what happens in a chemical reaction. The general form of a chemical equation is reactants, yields, products, and we say yields for the arrow. The reactants in a chemical equation are the substances that begin the reaction, and the products are the substances that are produced in the reaction. The reactants always are written on the left side of the equation of the arrow, and the products on the right. The arrow pointing from left to right shows that the reactants change into the products during the reaction. This happens when chemical bonds break in the reactants and form new bonds with the products. As a result, the products are different chemical substances than the reactants that started the reaction. Question. What is the general equation for the reaction in which iron rusts? Let's look at the answer. Iron combines with oxygen to produce rust, which is the compound named iron oxide. This reaction could be represented by the general chemical equation seen here. Note that when there are more than one reactant, they are separated by plus signs. If there are more than one product produced, the plus signs will be in between them as well. So our formula would be iron plus oxygen yields iron oxide. Using chemical symbols and formulas. When scientists write chemical equations, they use chemical symbols and chemical formulas instead of the names to represent the reactants and products. Because who really wants to spend the time to write it all out? I know I sure don't. Yes. Ain't nobody got time for that! Look at the chemical reaction illustrated here. In this reaction, carbon reacts with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide. 
carbon is represented with the chemical symbol C. The chemical symbol for oxygen is O, but the pure oxygen will exist as a diatomic or two-atom molecule, represented by the chemical formula O2. A molecule of the compound carbon dioxide it consists of one atom of carbon and two atoms of oxygen. So carbon dioxide is represented by the chemical formula CO2. The chemical equation would be C plus O2 yields CO2. Question. How have the atoms of the reactants been rearranged in the products of the reaction? What bonds have been broken? What new bonds have been formed? Well, the answer is the bonds between the oxygen atoms in the oxygen molecule have been broken and new bonds have formed between the carbon atom and the two oxygen atoms. Question. Is it balanced? All chemical equations, like math equations, must balance. This means that there must be the same number of each type of atom on both sides of the arrow. That's because matter is always conserved in a chemical reaction. That is the law of conservation of mass. Look at this equation between carbon and oxygen in the formation of carbon dioxide. Count the number of each type of atoms. Are the numbers the same on both sides of the arrows? Yes, they are. So that means that the equation is balanced. Coefficients. Let's return to the chemical reaction in which iron combines with oxygen to form rust, or iron oxide. The equation for this reaction would be 4Fe, Fe stands for iron, plus 3O2 yields 2 Fe2O3, and Fe2O3 stands for iron oxide. In this equation, we are illustrating the use of coefficients to balance the chemical equation. A coefficient is a number placed in front of a chemical symbol or formula that shows how many atoms or molecules of the substance are involved in the reaction. From the equation up for rusting, you can see that there are four iron atoms combined with three molecules of oxygen to form two molecules of iron oxide. Question, is the equation for rusting reaction balanced? And how can you tell? Yes, the equation is balanced. You can tell this because there are the same number of each type of atom on both sides of the arrow. So there are four iron atoms in the reactants and in the products, and there are six oxygen atoms on the left side of the arrow and six oxygen atoms on the right side of the arrow. Summary of writing chemical equations. Scientists use chemical equations to summarize what happens in chemical reactions. Reactants are placed on the left side of the arrow in an equation and products are placed on the right. An arrow is used to indicate the direction in which the reaction occurs and we pronounce it as yields. Plus signs are placed between multiple reactants and multiple products. In chemical reactions, reactants and products are represented by chemical symbols and formulas. Numbers called coefficients are placed in front of the symbols and formulas to show how much of each substance is involved in the reaction. Chemical equations must be balanced. A balanced equation has the same number of each type of atom on both sides of the equation.